my guest was a God mocker, denied God's power. Now he moves in all the supernatural gifts and says, we are entering the season of the burning bush. All delays restored and accelerated. Next. I am so excited. The Holy Spirit is so strong in this studio right now. Oh, I plead the blood of the Messiah of Israel over everyone watching. I surrender this platform totally to you, Holy Spirit. God, take over. Show us your glory. Robert Hodgkin had everything that the world says will make you happy. But what was really going on below the surface, Robert? You know, Sid, I'd grown up in a culture that I was raised to believe that if I achieved certain things, a certain level of status, a good enough job, a good enough income, had certain things, I should be happy. And I'd gotten all those things, like you said, and yet there was still something missing. It was like an up and down roller coaster ride of emotions, no matter what. There'd be good days, there'd be real good days, but there were always lows. There was this sense of how do I get off this emotional roller coaster? I'd done everything I'm supposed to do and I still don't have what I was promised. It reminds me when I was a kid, uh, I, I, TV taught me if I was a millionaire, I'd be happy. Most important things in life, money cannot buy. That's right. So you're out in the woods one day. Yeah, I had actually sort of semi-retired from my profession. I'm living in a cabin in the woods of Montana. Now, I had been searching because I knew there was something more, but I'd been searching in the new age and human potential mm -hmm. movement and hallucinogenic drugs. And I'd have these peak experiences, but they'd always fade. So it never, the satisfaction you felt for a moment never maintained. So I was looking everywhere except in the church and except in Christianity. I had dismissed Christianity completely, mocked Jesus completely. And yet this God that I mocked and dismissed for almost 40 years said, one day I'm splitting wood in Montana, going through a very difficult time, very much that up and down. And the God that I mocked and made fun of manifested his presence and declared to me, enveloped me in his presence and declared to me, I refuse not to love you. And for the first time in my entire life, this God that I dismissed as a con, a myth, a fairy tale who I mocked, all he wanted me to know was how loved and accepted I was. And all of a sudden I realized, this is what I've been looking for, this, this sense of love and acceptance and worth for nothing other than being and being able to see myself as he sees me. You know, as a non-believer, look at the goodness of God. God came to him. And <laughs> tell me again the words he said. He said, I refuse not to love you. And Sid, what was amazing is in this moment of his I amness, just his eternal wonderfulness, I brought before him every wicked, arrogant, selfish, hurtful, hateful thing I'd ever done, and there'd been a lot. And his response to every single one of them was, I refuse not to love you. Hmm. Well, the next day, what happened? So because of all the places I'd been searching, Sid, I knew something very real had happened. By, by, by that evening, though, I'd sort of chalked it up to another trippy experience like I'd had in the New Age or whatever, and I thought, this isn't going to last. So the next day I'm going through, I get a phone call that was very difficult. I slammed down the phone and I decided, I don't want to think about this. I don't want to feel this. I want to distract myself. So I was going to do the dishes, but I lived in a cabin in the woods by myself. There was like a spoon, a bowl, and a plate. There wasn't much dishes to do. So I decide I'm going to turn the music up really loud. And I take a couple steps towards the stereo, but before I get there, I feel a physical jolt of electricity hit me in the stomach. I actually felt something pop out of my mouth. Didn't see anything, but felt it. And in that moment, I fell to my knees and I began to weep. And for almost three hours, I wept almost uncontrollably. But when that finished, I came up off the floor. I was in my kitchen. I came up off the floor, snot and tears everywhere trailing. But it was like coming out from underwater. And I took this breath. <gasps> and as soon as I took the breath, this voice, my voice from deep inside me came out and said, Jesus, if you're as real as you felt in the woods yesterday, I, wanted, I don't want to do this by myself anymore. I want you to come inside me. I want your help. And he came flooding into me and nothing's been the same since. 
you know, something that someone like Robert never forgets. He is such a thankful man. You have found there is a power in thanksgiving. Absolutely. Thanksgiving brings multiplication. You know, one of the things I was so grateful for is God's love and His acceptance. So I'd thank Him for it all the time. And I would grow and experience this increase of His love and acceptance. Not because it was increasing. He wasn't giving me more because I was being good and saying thank you. It increased my capacity to experience the fullness of what was already mine. Well, I have said, woe is me. And I can tell you it's not as effective. Or it is effective, it's in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I've learned that when I say, thank you, God, that the, while I don't know what's going on, I know you're there and I know you're there. Thank you. First thing that happens is peace comes. Peace multiplies. And then all of a sudden you come back into that place of faith. And then your faith it triggers that belief. And I know you're there. And then that triggers the substance of your faith that establishes kingdom truth and kingdom reality in this realm. So when we give thanks, it triggers increase, it brings forth an increase of all that's already ours in Christ, and it actually begins to manifest it all around us. Don't you forget that. Then God gave Robert a download from heaven of the realms of power that are available to us, but most are not walking in that power that is available to us, but it's about to change. It's going to change for you. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube. Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of it's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. I have never heard what you're about ready to hear, and I have heard a lot. When he was filled with the Holy Spirit, because he's so cerebral, it was hard for him to receive it. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so I get saved like we talked about in a, outside a cabin in the woods of Montana and then the next day in a cabin in the woods of Montana. And it was just me, my Bible, and the Holy Spirit was there. And I'm reading all about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues, and I want it. So I'm going after it every night in my, in my prayers. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't grow up in any of this, but I saw it in the Word and believed it, so I'm going after it. And I used to do this thing every night, Sid, where because I didn't know how to pray, I'd seen a painting of a little boy with his hands on his bed kneeling by. So every night as an as a almost 40 year old man, I would kneel by my bed, put my hands like this and I'd pray. And at the end of my prayer, I'd say, okay, God, now I want that baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues. And because I didn't know anything, my understanding was I had to loosen my jaw enough that he could take over. So he must have been laughing in heaven because every night I'd end my prayer and say, okay, I'm ready, God. <laughs> you really I'm, did I'm, I did. I really did this exact thing where I'd try to get my jaw loose enough that you, you take over, God. And it, nothing was happening, and you can guess why. So one night in God's incredible mercy and grace, I was actually at a bed and breakfast somewhere else, but I'm doing, still doing this. And all of a sudden, the Lord takes me into a vision because I'm, I'm doing this thing and it's not working, obviously. He takes me into a vision. And in the vision, Sid, I'm in a classroom, like first grade, like when I was a kid and you learned to read. And there was the banner on the, the wall of the alphabet. And when I was little, obviously it was big A, little A, big B, B little B, but it was different. It was the first thing I saw was a big A, a little B, a little A. And I'm thinking, that's not right. But I hear this still small voice that I come to know as Holy Spirit say, say, speak to me and say, say it. So I'm thinking, okay, Abba, and I read down the banner, Abba, Ki, No, Say, Wa. And I have no idea what that is. The next thing I know, he says, say it again. And now it turns into like a scrolling digital image. Like when I was investing in the 90s is what I'd look at for stock reports when the symbols would scroll by. Right. So Sid, I'm thinking, are these companies you want me to invest in, God? <laughs> and, but, and he said, say it. And I'm saying, Abba, Ki, No, Say, Wa. Again, Abba, Ki, No, Say, Wa. Again, Abba, Ki, No, Say, Wa. And then all of a sudden, 
And this shows how personal our God is and how he knows exactly how to reach every one of us. I didn't grow up going to church or reading the Bible or any of that. I grew up reading every DC and Marvel superhero comic book I could get my hands on. And I loved superheroes. And one of my favorite characters was somebody called the Human Torch in the Fantastic mm -hmm. Four. And he would say, flame on, and burst into flames and go off in his adventures. So here I am praying in tongues and not even knowing it. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit whispers to me, say, flame on. <laughs> so Abba Kino, say, wa, Abba Kino, flame on. And then in the spirit, not in the natural, but in the spirit, I see myself burst into flames. And I said, what is going on? And God spoke to me. And he said, you've been baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit and released in the gift of tongues. And you said it. I was approaching it so cerebrally. He had to get me beyond my mind so I could be led by him into the thing I'd been seeking from him for months. Hmm. You, you know, it's so easy once you are a child of God and born again. In fact, would you lead people in a yes. prayer to know the Messiah like you know him? Absolutely. I declare right now that Messiah Jesus, who loved me so much, to not only forgive me of all my sins, but show up and declare his love. May you be engulfed by his love right now, drawn into the fullness of his heart right now, so that you come into a saving knowledge of this God who loves us, knows exactly how to meet us, knows exactly how to speak to us. May you have that experience too. And when you do, all you have to do is what I did. You simply have to say, Messiah Jesus, I receive you. It's that easy. It's that easy. Take that first step. You know what I said? Jesus, help. <laughs> That's what go. I said. And then ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You may not see a ticker tape of all those symbols, but I'll tell you what, if you'll just proceed with childlike faith, and you see, if you don't speak it out loud, no one else will speak for you. You have a free will. If you don't make sounds in English from your brain, you won't speak anything. If you don't make sounds from your spirit, which is in your belly, you won't speak anything. Just by faith, speak, release your language. Robert, tell me about the revelation you had of these realms of fire. The amazing things about the realms of power, Sid, is that God started to mentor me in it at one of my least powerful moments. I was overcoming, I was in the midst of a 12 year long, really significant, really debilitating health battle. I was withering and wasting away. I was so weak I couldn't stand up in a shower. I often couldn't lift my head up off the pillow. And yet this is when Holy Spirit started to come to me and wanted to teach me and mentor me in how to live in the realms of power available to us in Christ. God's given you a word. We're in the season of the burning bush. When I hear burning bush, I think of Moses, and he saw a, a bush that was burning, but it, 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 it just was like an eternal fire in that bush. And it, it wasn't destroying, it just kept burning. That's what you're talking about? Yeah, what God showed me, Sid, is the reason the fire burned, the bush burned but wasn't consumed, is because it was the I am of God, the present tense now power of our God. So why does a, why does a, a campfire burn down in the natural? Because time passes, right? So what Moses encountered, he'd seen fires in the desert before, but something was different about this. It was the present tense now power of God. And think about what happened for Moses. 40 years on the backside of nowhere, nothing to show for it. Even the flock he was tending wasn't his, it was his father-in-law's. And yet at the burning bush moment, God reminded Moses who God is. God reminded Moses who he was and what he was called to. And then God supernaturally empowered Moses to go out and walk in it, to launch out into it. That's what happens. And that's what God is doing amongst his people in this burning bush season. He's reminding you who God is. He's reminding you who you are and he's dealing with any block, hindrance, delay, interference that has caused you to miss out, or even if you messed up, it's all getting burned up in the burning bush, breakthrough firepower of God. I'll tell you what, when we return, Robert is going to, if they, only if you, uh, uh, you, know, you at home and you in the studio audience want this, I'm gonna ask him to release the burning bush experience and all the realms of power you'll need in your life. Be right back. We will be right back.
back to It's Supernatural. Call to get Robert Hodgkin's brand new book, Realms of Power, operating in untapped dimensions of Holy Spirit power, plus the new and exclusive three CD audio set, How to Access the Realms of Power in Your Life. This book and CD power package reveals how you are handpicked by God to be a difference maker as you unlock and activate what God has already given you. Yours for a donation of only $35. Ask for offer number 9858. Shipping and handling is included. You are way more powerful than you realize. And I want to show you how to be part of God's solution right here, right now. I reveal how to activate the realms of power available to you. Robert Hodgkin, in practical, step-by-step, easy-to-read chapters, will guide you and show you that God wants His people to wake up and open your eyes to untapped dimensions of supernatural power that are meant to be a normal part of your everyday life. Learn to access and use 12 power realms, including the power of faith, the power of unity, the power of favor and giving thanks, and creating wealth. Learn how to actually shift atmospheres around you, just like Jesus did when He spoke to the storm. See how the enemy understands the supernatural power of the soul better than average believers. But God wants to unlock in you the supernatural power of your mind, your will, and your emotions. The enemy has been lying to us as believers, especially in all that's going on in the world right now, making us feel like we're powerless, like there's nothing that we can do to make a difference in the world. That's exactly the opposite of God's truth for you. You're his dominion steward and He has given you realms of power that you can tap into to make a difference in your life, in your family, in your bloodline, in your city, in your region, in this world. You already have all you need within you from God. Now you need to learn how to use it. Don't miss out on getting Robert's brand new book, Realms of Power, plus the new exclusive three CD audio set, How to Access the Realms of Power in Your Life, all yours. For a donation of only $35, ask for offer number 9858. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's super Natural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9858 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Robert, we've been talking about realms of power, and there are so many different ones. Pick one and tell us about it and maybe an experience you had with it. Yeah, I think one of my favorites, Sid, is the, 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 the power of working miracles because we tend to think it's really complicated or it's super spiritual. It's not, and that's the kingdom. The kingdom's simple. And the key to stepping into this realm of power, the power of working miracles, is right there in the name, right there in the title. It's not the power of miracles that we're given according to the Apostle Paul. It's the power of the working of miracles. And that word, Sid, for working is energeo, and it has two distinct meanings, to be mighty, but also to be active. And the key to unlocking the realm of the power of working miracles, to grow mighty in working miracles, is simply to be active in the working of miracles, to go out and do it, to simply step out and pray for that healing, pray for that breakthrough. I'm reminded of the scripture, faith without corresponding action is dead. So the result is the opposite, faith with a biblical corresponding action is the life of God. I like that better. Yeah, it's quite You know, and the great thing is, we talked about this already, you don't have to feel powerful or supernatural to be it, you are it. So I can speak for myself, I often feel nothing, but I'm active in the working of miracles, so I've grown mighty in the working of miracles. Some of the most significant miracles I've seen, including creative miracles in the womb with twin babies that were so significantly malformed, the doctors told the parents, don't even name them, they won't survive birth. They were baby A and baby B. I felt nothing other than knowing the God in me and what God can do through me. I prayed for the babies, a very simple prayer, and said within a month, I got a uh, email from the parents saying, we just got the new sonogram. The babies are perfectly whole and healthy in the womb. And in my Bible, I have a picture of them as healthy five-year-old girls. Now, are you saying, yeah, you're gifted. Are you saying everyone born again that says, 
has been filled with the Spirit of God can operate in this realm, the gift of miracles? Absolutely. You said I'm gifted. The only way I'm gifted is I've, been, I've received the gift of the Holy Spirit, and so is every one of you. So every one of us can move in this. Part of my ministry is to put on display that everything God said is true, but also He can do it in, with, and through anyone, because truly there's nothing special about me. I'm going to put you on the spot. I want you to release the realms of glory. I want you to, I want everyone that is viewing or in the studio audience viewing or at home or wherever you are, I want them to feel the presence of God. I want them to operate in gifting. They never, they only thought the people on TV could do. Would you pray right now? Amen. Lord God, I thank you that your plan since day six is to been to have a people willing to be in relationship with you who would put you on display in notable and remarkable ways. And right now, I release the fullness of your goodness that is your glory. I release the fullness of your love, wave after wave after wave, to touch and impact every single person watching, that they'll be reminded of who you are and what you're capable of. But even more, they'll be stirred to step out into who they are in you, with you, and for you, and what they're capable of to the glory of your name. God, wrap them in that glory, wrap them in that love, inspire them, and even more, ignite them to go out and work miracles to the glory of your name. God has given you three prophetic warnings. Could you very briefly share that? Absolutely. God has issued these three prophetic warnings because we're in such epic days, and he wants to keep us on track and productive for the kingdom. The first prophetic warning, Sid, is to watch over our heart towards God because the enemy's after our faith, and he's trying to release a move of apostasy, and he doesn't want us to make the mistakes the disciples did. We're in the midst of all these storms. We come to him and say, do you not care that we're drowning? He wants us to know he's there, that he cares, and he's going to use us in great ways. The second warning, Sid, is for us to watch over our hearts towards one another because the enemy is more aware of the power of unity, another great realm of power, than we are. And if you notice through social media and everything else, Christians and believers in Messiah Jesus, they're turning on one another. They're biting and sniping at one another. Why? Because while one man or woman in God's in the majority, when there's unity. This logarithmic progression of kingdom impact happens. The Bible says one sets a thousand to flight, two ten thousand. Geometric progression. Unity creates a landing spot for God. Look at Acts 2. So God is saying, watch over your heart towards other believers. And then said the final warning, he said, is in this season of warfare, and we're in a season of warfare, to stay on track and effective, we must learn how to process loss without seeing it as defeat. And I'll use the example of the cross. At the cross, there was genuine loss. Mary lost having her son in her life every single day. The disciples lost their understanding of what was going on, so much so that they either ran away or fell away. But there was no defeat at the cross. It was the greatest victory that's ever been seen. We will have loss in this season of warfare, but we must learn not to deny it or ignore it because then that'll build up into bitterness and apathy and other things. We must process it, but we must be careful when we process it. We don't see it as defeat because the enemy wants us to see it as defeat, so we pull away from God. We stop believing, we stop praying, we stop decreeing, we stop declaring, because the enemy is terrified of what the body of Messiah Jesus is about to do in the earth. That's you. You're about to do great and mighty things for our King and God. <laughs>